All right, we'll go ahead and uh, get started with an opening statement from coach and then we'll open up for questions. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to think who's, we'll go ahead and coach and then we'll open it up. Well, obviously we got off to a uh, better start today. Uh, the insertion of, of, of Jacob um, was, uh, um, worked out nice. And it wasn't uh, that, that DeMonte had been doing anything poorly. I, I, I thought it was just a change. You guys know I don't care a whole bunch about who starts and who, who doesn't. It's about trying to find that right mix. And and uh, and then we were able to come in and, and, and slide DeMonte in, um, you know, a little bit more at the guard position. Uh, you know, we, we I made a concentrated effort to get Coleman uh, more minutes and in, involved in the ball game. Uh, and then uh, uh, so I, I, I like that. And, uh, you know, 18 assists tonight is something I'm really proud of. Uh, I'm really proud of our execution uh, against the zone. We have not seen a lot of zone. Uh, you know, we, we were they had been playing more uh, more zone. And, uh, you know, we've got a very, very good passing team, and that was very evident tonight. Uh, Jacob in the high post, Curbelo in the high post, uh, Coleman in the high post. Uh, you know, I think we had a possession where we made five, six, seven passes, and there wasn't a dribble uh, until Kofi caught it just kind of to gather himself. And uh, that is so fun to watch. But uh, uh, I liked our energy. I liked um, our sustainability. Uh, you know, the only negative thing, and, and I, I told our team this, and was, you know, we made some scouting report mistakes uh, in the first half. But, uh, again, this is an, a, a special team in terms of Penn State offensively. And uh, Myron Jones got his. Uh, he's very uh, underappreciated in our conference in terms of how gifted he is offensively. Uh, but I thought we did a great, great job on Brockington. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, Lundy got going a little bit uh, in the first half on some of those mistakes. And then I thought we did a great job on Sessoms. Uh, Sessoms is, a, is, a, is an elite score. Uh, and, and we took him out of the ball game. And uh, you take a couple of their guys out, and that was something that was, uh, was very big for us. Okay, hey, we'll open up for, uh, questions. Joy Wagner, leadoff, Derek Piper, Gavin Good, Robert Rosenthal. Go ahead, Joy. Hey Brad, the decision to put Jake in the starting lineup, was that something you had been thinking about for a while? I guess how and when did you kind of decide to, to try that out? Well, you know, I think that, um, you know, you, you're always searching and, and, and I guess you hit a little bit of a, uh, a valley and you, you, you know that something's not quite right. You've got to figure out what, what exactly that is, um, you know, and, and it was, uh, Jake's been playing great and uh, you know Coleman's been doing some incredible things in practice and, and we see his size and length what that did with three block shots and um, you know both of those young guys have been doing some things and then it's also trying to um, you, you guys again you guys know how important it is to come off the bench I've been studying a lot um, uh, our, our, our groupings and and what's what our best defensive group is what our best offensive group is and 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 uh, you know trying to play with that a lot so we don't get uh, long runs against us and and uh, so you know that was that was the d decision uh, Jake's earned it and uh, he was very very good tonight. Then we saw his it looked like right shoulder area with some ice. Is there any what happened and maybe is there an update on him at all? Uh, just, you know, it's been something he tweaked in practice a little bit in terms of kind of a, a an, an aggravated stinger, I guess, is, was was a term and, and maybe a bruise. And uh, uh, he just kind of aggravated that. And it was just kind of a, you know, how you get a kind of a numb feeling. And, and that was, uh, uh, that's where that's at. So I uh, still had ice on it. And I'll talk with, uh, uh, with he and the trainer who were visiting with the docs tomorrow to see what's, uh, what, what's beyond that? Thanks, Brad. Okay, go ahead, Derek. Gavin, you're on deck. Hey, Coach, you guys saw a zone in that first half against Northwestern and maybe didn't handle it the best. What do you think has changed the most? Obviously, the passing, you had seven different guys within assists tonight. Um, how encouraging is that that you handle it uh, differently? That's great. That's great, Derek. I mean, it's, it's something that uh, 
you know, we know teams in this league are going to throw out their different points and, and, uh, uh, you know, it was, we had a, we had a little bit of time to prepare for it and, and, and work at it. And again, we had some great segments in practice, you know, so our, our attention and pra- our attention detail in practice was just as good as we played tonight in it. So I'm, um, I'm just so excited about that because we, you know, we've, we've practiced that and practiced really good. And, and to see that carry over tonight was great. As the schedule stands right now, 10 days away, your next game against Iowa, have you had any communication with the league on any changes or what that could look like going forward? It's literally day by day right now. Um, I am not expecting um, any real movement from the from the league in terms of sliding another game in um, conference-wise. You know, every time you make a move, uh, it affects two other teams and, and, and right on down the line, next thing you know, you've got kind of a, a snowball effect, but, uh, uh, we are, uh, aggressively trying to find a, a, a non-conference opponent that will meet some, some of our testing protocols, uh, to slide in there. Um, but again, it's, uh, uh, you're, you're looking at a time slot where a lot of teams are playing, uh, but we'll see how that uh, how that pans out. Right now, it's unique. We're in the middle of January. We don't know who our next opponent is. So, um, you know, in, in terms of, you know, before the Iowa game. So we'll have to wait and see. And I'd like to find a game if we could. Thanks. Hey, Gavin, you're up. Robert, you're on deck. Go ahead, Gavin. Hey, Brad. Obviously, the, the big concern was these runs you guys were giving up and slow starts. Got off to a quick start today. Um, Penn State didn't really ever put together any scoring runs, but you guys still did seem to have some periods where, you know, there was some lagging energy, and I, I saw you upset a few times. Um, what, what's your critique of, of this team day? It was better. You know, I, I, I told them I was going to coach them hard, and, and you know, we've got, uh, um, you know, one of the biggest challenges is, is the, the mental uh, component of this, and, and, you know, we, had, we would have games last year where we would have, yeah, you know, we give up five points on scouting, scouting report errors and, and, and makes, and, and when you scheme and you handle something, you've got to count on guys handling that and, and you've got to know personnel. And uh, that was a major part of our preparation for this was just knowing your personnel, knowing who you're guarding and what he does. And, and uh, uh, so uh, much, much better much better and much, much more focused, much better energy. And you know, I mean, there's going to be a lull in every game. You're not going to score every possession or, or you, you may go two or three possessions. Uh, but I've, I've tried really hard to, you know, help manage that with, with, with our bench and, and the lineups we have in, uh, but also understand that, you know, a team like Penn state uh, can really get going offensively. And, and I thought defensively tonight, Trent was outstanding and, and, uh, uh, we did a nice job of of uh, uh, taking some of their guys out of it. Thanks, Coach. Hey, Robert, you're up. Brandon, you're on deck. Coach, following up on what Gavin said, uh, there was a moment uh, about 10 minutes left. You were kind of in a little lull, about seven minutes without a basket there, and you put Kofi, Io, and Trent in at the same time. Was that directed toward that? Was that a thought of of uh, this this a lull is coming, get the starters back in? I mean, you know, there's there's a there's an opportunity to get some guys some minutes when you've got an 18, 19, 20 point lead and 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 let them grow through some stuff and and um, you know yet you you respect how good Penn State is offensively and uh, you know I think we had a you know missed layup and, and I think Bello missed a layup and, and then we had a turnover or two that were that were that were casual and uh, you know okay let's you know kind of get back to the to the guys who who, who brought you to you know, to this point and, um, you know, and stop that. And I thought we did that. Thanks. Hey, Brandon, you're up. Matt Stevens on deck. Hey, Brad, 14 minutes for Coleman Hawkins tonight. What'd you kind of see, see from him and why'd he get some more run tonight? He's earned it. You know, you, you guys, you're going to see at some point uh, in the not too distant future, how good a talent Coleman Hawkins is. I mean, uh, He's an elite passer. I've, I've said it many times. I love, I love, love, love his skill set, and and he's earned it. He's been great in practice. You know, he he comes in. And he's so instinctive. He's a guy that does things that, um, you don't coach, and um, you know, just reaction to those blocks and getting to the ball and 
Um, I, I love that. And, and we're a better team. Um, and, and we've seen that in practice when, when he gets on the court, we, he, he does a lot of good things to help us. Speaking of coaching, you, uh, you pulled him after he got that technical, what was your message to him after that? Uh, I really liked that. And, um, I was, I was, um, and, and I say that in about a half serious way. Uh, he made a heck of a block and, uh, you know, I kind of like that grit. You know, I was kind of that trash talking, you know, that, that was kind of me and, and made a heck of a play. Now he's got to learn, you know, that, that you can't do that in front of an official or you can't be that demonstrative. And the game had a little pitch to it that they were going to call all that. But, uh, uh, and I love that emotion. Hey, Matt Stevens, you're up. Brad Sturdy on deck. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, I, couldn't, I couldn't have noticed the 180 degree difference of attitude that Kofi had toward the foul line tonight. He, he goes up and makes nine of 13 tonight. And it, Saturday, it just seemed like that was the last place in the world he wanted to be. Is it really that simple of a mental block for him if he can get that fixed that he can be that dominant? And and I and I'm saying this, I. I spent 40 minutes with him the other day and we made one just little, little two actually little tweaks. And, and it was, uh, you know, it's a, it's about seeing the ball go in. It's amazing what practice does. And when you do it and you know, he was standing up there, he'd make 13 in a row, miss one. He'd, he'd, re, he'd move his foot and, and, and reset. And then it'd be 14 in a row and then he'd miss one. And, you know, all of a sudden when you start adding it up, you know, he's, you know, 87 out of a hundred and, you know, it, it was w with, with a lot of streaks there. And so, um, you know, Kofi's got great touch. He's, he's got really big hands. So sometimes it gets, uh, a little more challenging for him, but yeah, he's when, when, when he's, when he's making free throws, he's a, he's a heck of a weapon. Hey, Brad Sturdy, you're up. Scott Ritchie on deck and then Alec, go ahead, Brad. Coach, you had a co talk about Kofi, but it seemed like in the post he was more patient against the double team. He was aggressive against single coverage, but it seemed like he was more patient in the post against the double and triple teams, able to pass out better. Um, how how you think he's progressing in that area after that? Yeah, I mean it's one of those things that that we've had some hard talks with him about, you know, and and it's it's we continue to work with it. And tonight he was in a great place and. And, um, you know, ag aggressive, like you said, in the one-on-ones. And, and then, uh, you know, literally some of our best possessions in the Ohio State game were, were when he just – when he kicked it out, he made the right play. And uh, uh, those will eliminate some of his what I call casual turnovers. Uh, but, um, yeah, he's just got to keep seeing them. And, and it helps when we knew it was coming. We knew where it was coming from. And, uh, you know, Kofi's, uh, Co Kofi's then – got the vision and the strength to, to make the right pass. Okay, Scott Ritchie and then Alec. Go ahead, Scott. Hey, Brad, you mentioned the assist, but just in terms of ball movement in general, maybe making extra pass, using it to neutralize the zone a bit, where does this game kind of rank in terms of what you've seen from this team? Yeah, it's right up there, no doubt. Uh, at this point, uh, uh, the unselfishness, the, the turning down, um, turning down a good shot to get a great shot and uh, making the extra. And, and, you know, tonight's a night they trap IO great. He has five assists and, and probably has another four or five hockey assist. And, and, uh, you know, that's, that's what good players do. And, 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 and that becomes really contagious. And, uh, so I'm, I'm excited. And, um, you know, when we can have possessions where we don't over dribble, we can have possessions where the ball moves and more importantly, the players move. Uh, that's fun to see. And that's, that's really good basketball. Okay. And then we'll finish up with Alec. Go ahead, Alec. Hey coach. I know you just praised Iowa's passing ability and the assist that he had tonight, but I think over his last four games in the first half, he's like five of 26 or five of 25 um, in the first half. How do you kind of get him going in the first half? Or what do you kind of, kind of message to him at this point with his first half no messages none just keep being the best guard in the country i i mean guys he's at the top of everybody's scouting reports these guys are really good and, and they do a great job of taking good players away 
I, you know, I guess my answer is that, I mean, you want him to shoot it over double teams. Uh, you know, it's just playing really good, smart basketball. And uh, I was picking his poison and, and uh, uh, you know, I'm, you know, he's averaging 23 points a game. I mean, I, I, that's to me, it's, there's, there's no message there. Or go ahead, Scott. This will be our last question. Yeah. Uh, Brad, I guess since Brandon asked you about Coleman's technical, uh, what were your kind of your thoughts about DeMonte's and what was that whole situation that took 15 minutes and resulted in one extra tech? Yeah, I thought, um, I, and again, I've got to watch it, um, the entire situation. I mean, there was there was some some talking. I thought the officials did a great, great job tonight. And I mean, when you get Paul Zelk and, and, and Chris, and that's a veteran crew and, and Kelly, and I thought they did a great job of understanding that they're, they're put in a tough spot because it was a timeout. And, uh, you know, so people were, you know, kind of leaving the bench scene, but, um, you know, it was, it was, it was, you know, heated game and, kids playing hard and some of that happens and there's, there's going to be some, uh, some emotion, but uh, it was what it was. And, and uh, I was glad to see nobody on their side or our side was, was, was penalized too heavily. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. I'll wrap it.